This is the tutorial video on the new intrinsic camera calibration method that's in the Kinect package. Uh, intrinsic calibration is the one that calculates the projection and lens parameters for the two cameras, depth and, uh, and color, and then also how the two of them relate to each other to create a, a physically precise 3D model out of the Kinect data. And in a nutshell, this method is based on a semi-transparent calibration target, this, uh, this grid here. Um, the reason it has to be semi-transparent is that uh, it then looks like a checkerboard um, to both the uh, the color camera and the depth camera. And so what you do is now um, you essentially aim the camera at this calibration target from a variety of distances and viewpoints. Uh, and then you fit a virtual grid to the observed grids in the color and depth camera. And by doing that a bunch of times for different viewpoints, it gives the software enough information uh, to calculate exactly uh, how the two cameras relate to each other, and more importantly, how the 3D camera, how the depth camera uh, projects back out into space to get physically precise 3D models. So once you've set it up like this, you probably want to start by taking a very close picture of both of the of the grid in both cameras. So I'm just going to push it, push the Kinect here to the grid until the top of the grid starts disappearing because now it's too close and the Kinect only works uh, to a certain distance away. And then I'm going to re-aim this a bit. Uh, now, of course, I have to pull it a little bit away again. Interestingly enough, it is not necessary for this procedure that both cameras actually see the entire grid. The important thing is uh, that both of them see the uh, interior grid points from here to there. I should say a little bit more how to make this grid. Um, this here is just a glass plate uh, with a bunch of paper squares glued to it. I didn't actually glue on the paper squares individually. What I did is I printed a grid onto a large sheet of paper. Um, glued the entire piece of paper to the glass plate and then just with a, a metal ruler and an exacto knife I just cut along the grid lines and peeled off um, all the odd um, tiles. The important thing is that um, the number of tiles both in X and Y is odd and that the corner tiles um, are made opaque because the software assumes that. So let's start from, from this particular point of view. Now we have to make a tool that allows us to draw a grid into the camera space and to do that I'm just going to uh, press and hold the one key. Um, that brings up the tool menu and in that one I select a draw grids tool. I'm not pressing any mouse buttons here, I'm just still holding on to the one key. Then I'm letting go of one and so now I'm starting the tool creation process. Uh, now I need to press a couple of additional keys. Uh, I'm now pressing number uh, key number two to store the grid that I have just drawn, and then number three to show or hide the grids I already did, and number four to run the actual calibration, and then button five, which we won't need in this case, uh, to unproject a grid. So then once I press five, the tool is complete, and so now it draws these two green grids uh, onto either of the camera feeds, and now the task is to manually align those grids uh, until they until they exactly fit the observation and then again do that for a bunch of different viewpoints. So the way I set up the tool is now that I interact and drag the grids using the one key. Again I'm not pressing any mouse buttons, I'm just moving the mouse to any of the grid corners like here and then by pressing and holding one I can move that grid corner to the position where it goes and then I just keep doing that uh, and the the best procedure I found is to always drag uh, the inner uh, well those four grid pointers here, the, um, the inner corners of the outermost uh, grid tiles, and then to just do a rough alignment first, where I get go around all four corners uh, and align them roughly, and then I can zoom in a bit, uh, and I can then do a better job of aligning them. The reason why I'm doing this manually and not using an automated process um, is that in the color image there are definitely automated processes that can do a very good job of fitting these grids, but in a moment we'll see that the depth image is so noisy and messy that I haven't found an automatic method that actually works well, so that's why we have to do it manually. Um, now in order to do it on the depth grid, the first thing you have to do is, uh, is average the uh, a depth image. So I'm going to the main menu by pressing the right button, select average frames, and then I just have to wait for a second or two until the image doesn't change anymore. The camera has now collected a whole bunch of uh, depth frames and has now calculated the average frame. And now I can start dragging the grid here. And I should mention there's also this uh, dot in the middle. Uh, if I pick up that and press the one key, I can move the entire grid all at once. And this point out here, if I drag that, I can rotate the entire grid. But I don't really do that very often. I usually just go 
um, and drag the four corners. So now, because the depth image is so noisy, you can see that the corners of these tiles are very fuzzy looking, and that's going to get worse as we put the camera farther away from the target. Uh, this is why it's a manual process. Um, it takes a little bit of practice doing this right. You just have to practice and practice until you get perfect um, to sort of find the ideal placement of the grid so that it kind of goes through uh, goes through all of the tiles and doesn't cut off too much, doesn't leave too much. It's hard to explain. Uh, unfortunately, it's just something that you have to do uh, and keep doing until you get a good calibration. So this year is probably uh, pretty good thing. So now what's happening is I have these two grids, both of them aligned. Uh, so now I can store uh, this pair of grids as a tie point by pressing the 2 key. You just have to press it once. There it goes. doesn't really give you any feedback. Uh, and then it's time to move on to the next to the next viewpoint. Uh, so first I'm turning off the average frame, so I'm going to see a live uh, updated image again. Then I pick up the camera and just move it to a different position. So now what I want to do is I want to get a whole bunch of different distances, but I also want to get different viewing angles. I want to get a view where I'm looking at the grid sort of from the side. Uh, that's important uh, to get more constraints on the formula that the Kinect uses to, to calculate or to, uh, to represent uh, depth information. So let me aim that a little bit differently like this. Okay, and then um, again, I can already, while I start working on this one, I can calculate an average frame here, and then I start by going to the depth, sorry, into the color image, uh, aligning those. There's another thing that you might notice, I should mention that. Um, this grid cell down here, you notice, has a little dot in the middle. I drew that on there, and you see that here the virtual grid has a little dot as well. The idea is that those two dots need to line up, they mark the lower left corner of the grid. It's not actually that important for the intrinsic calibration, but it becomes very important for extrinsic calibration, where you use multiple connects and you want to align them with respect to each other, because then if you make a mistake and accidentally flip the grid or get the dot lined up to the wrong grid corner, then of course you're going to get completely bogus results. Okay, I'm going in here, lining that up nicely. Now you'll notice that the interior corners of the grid don't exactly match the virtual grid. Uh, and the reason for that is there's a little bit of lens distortion in the Kinect camera, and the current method uh, doesn't correct, correct for lens distortion yet. That's still work left to do. Okay, so now I'm going in here. Of course, in the depth image, you don't see the little dot uh, on the lower left tile, so you just have to make sure that the dot in the color image and the dot in the depth image more or less line up. So again, going through here, going there, going there and going there. Keep in mind that in order to drag the grid, I'm pressing and holding the one key, not using any mouse buttons at all. Uh, so now I have a rough alignment, and now I can start cleaning it up, getting a more precise alignment. The idea is to get it so that the number of pixels in the foreground that shoot out of the opaque grid cells uh, is about the same number as the number of, uh, of background uh, pixels that uh, protrude into the opaque grid cells, just in order to make up for the way how the Kinect handles uh, converts its scattered depth information that it actually collects uh, into a continuous depth image. We have to unfortunately work against what the Kinect camera is doing. So here we have another tie point. Um, I'm pressing 2 again to save that. All right, and then turn off average frames and get another setup. Now, the number of setups you should collect, there is not really a hard and fast answer for that. Uh, the more of them you select, uh, generally the better calibration you're going to get, but of course it gets a little bit tedious, and the chances are getting bigger and bigger that you make a mistake at some point and have to start over. Um, but you need at least, I would say, six from different distances, different points of view. And the distances from which you should do that, you should keep in mind what the distance is at which you want to use your connect, connect later on, uh, because you should have calibration points that bracket sort of the maximum distance. In other words, if you want to use the connect and capture things that are, let's say, one meter away, then you need to, then you should really have a couple of uh, calibration setups where the camera was more than one meter away from the calibration target, at which point it becomes pretty difficult to actually get a good match. Um, because in the depth image, uh, the depth image gets noisier and noisier and messier and messier as you get far away 
from the from the target. Okay, that's pretty good for color. Uh, let's do the same thing over here. This way, that way, this and that. Okay, that's still pretty good. Actually, that's a really good uh, that's a really good fit here. I can leave it. Maybe clean it up a little bit more. So you notice that here, for example, there's a lot of uh, foreground that is sticking out into this supposedly empty tile to the left. Um, and the reason for that is just, unfortunately, the algorithm that the Connect uses uh, to create a continuous depth image. And there's unfortunately not a way of turning that off to just get the raw measurements. That would be ideal, but uh, there's no such thing. Okay, we have another calibration tie point. I'm pressing 2 again. And I should mention the, the 3 button that I pointed out earlier. Uh, it shows or hides the grids that have been previously collected, so you get an idea uh, of how many you have and where they are. But I usually don't show them because they just get in the way. Okay, I'm going to now do one from a fairly large distance just to show what the problems with that are. Uh, let's say like this. So the first issue is that uh, the, the depth resolution of the Kinect uh, is, of course, it gets coarser and coarser as you go away from the camera, which means that at this distance it's pretty hard to even visually distinguish um, between background and foreground. Uh, and then once we have the average image, uh, I'm going to show what the other problems are. So in the color image, fortunately, because that is really just a regular camera and doesn't do any scatter data interpolation, um, it's always fairly easy to, to do the grid alignment. Again, there are automatic methods to do that, but since I needed to do a manual method for the depth camera anyway, uh, I was just lazy and applied the same method to the color image as well. Okay, that's already it. So now here you're going to see it's going to get tricky because we really don't see very much. And cases like this here um, are the reason why automatic methods would really would really break down. So now you have to just squint a lot uh, and just have a lot of experience in order to get a good alignment. You need to not only look at the corner tiles, but when you drag the, the corner grid point, of course, you notice that all of the grid lines are changing because what you're defining here really is a projection of a 3D grid onto a 2D plane. Uh, and so don't just look to line up these corners, but look at the whole picture and try to line up all of the grid tiles as much as possible. Now there's also some uh, lens distortion in the depth image, which I'm not correcting for, but fortunately that is comparatively small, so you don't really notice it here. Okay, um, that should do it. Uh, of course, normally you would collect a lot more uh, calibration tie points than this one. Um, but I'm just going to leave it at that right now, otherwise the video is going too long. So I want to save the last grid, that's uh, the 2 key. And so now we are done, I'm just going to do a quick check how many grids we have, looks pretty good. Uh, and so now I press 4 uh, in order to calculate the uh, calibration coefficients. So this will uh, do uh, an optimization which is going to run uh, very fast, so it's going to take less than a second, and it will print a lot of information to the terminal from which you ran Raw Connect Viewer. Um, it will print some internal status of the optimization procedure. There will be something like smallest eigenvalue of V, and it should be a very, very small number. In my case here, it's 6 times 10 to the minus 24. Uh, and then it will print a matrix with intrinsic camera parameters. Uh, and then after that, it will print the depth conversion formula which is the formula of how to take the, the depth values that are the raw depth images um, returned by the Kinect and converts them into a physical distance. In this case, the distance is measured in centimeters. And then the most important thing is it will tell you that it just wrote a calibration file to the Kinect packages configuration directory where it's going to be called intrinsic parameters dash and then the serial number of your Kinect camera to keep them all separate uh, dot that. So you don't have to do anything to that file. Uh, at this moment, um, you can exit out of the program, and now you should have uh, a calibration between the two cameras and also from the depth camera into 3D space. And the way to test that calibration uh, is, to, uh, is to just run the regular Kinect Viewer, not raw Kinect Viewer, which will automatically load up the calibration you just calculated and will show you a 3D image um, of the calibration target. Just leave it, uh, just bring it again close to the target so you 
you have a better chance of, of doing the measurement. And so what you do then is you, you run Connect Viewer uh, and you use a measurement tool uh, to measure the, the extents of your grid, to measure the distance, let's say, from this point to that point, and from this point to that point, that to that, and that to that. And then those distances, if your calibration went well, should be very close to the actual distances, uh, to the actual size of your calibration target. Um, in my case, um, the calibration target has seven by five tiles, uh, and each tile is three and a half by three and a half inches. Um, so when I loaded this back up into Connect Viewer with the calibration I ran earlier, uh, I measured from here to there, um, and the theoretical length of that line is one, two, three, four, five times three and a half inches times 2.54 because the Connect works in centimeters. Uh, so that would be 44. Point four something centimeters and what I measured was 44.6 I think so it was two millimeters uh, which is uh, which is actually a pretty good result considering that we are not correcting for some of the lens distortion in the depth camera. So you definitely want to get a result that is close to the real size of your target. If you don't get that result uh, you'll just have to redo the calibration um, until you get it right basically. Um, as I said it takes a little bit uh, of trial and error getting used to um, how to best align those grids, uh, especially in a depth image because that's the hard part. But then once you got used to it, uh, it's pretty quick uh, to calibrate a new Kinect camera from scratch um, or to redo and improve the calibration of an existing camera. So I hope that this video um, helped a little bit with that process, which I hadn't ever really explained well. Um, and. Uh, and gets everyone to uh, to calibrate their connects properly. Most importantly for 3D reconstruction, um, but then also for the sandbox, where the better calibrated your connect is, the more precisely the uh, the virtual sand surface will follow the real sand surface. All right. Well, good luck.